In this video, I'd like to show you a graphical method of setting up joint limits. We'll start by using the joint dialog box. I'm going to put a cylindrical joint on this washer to this rod. I'll go to joints and hover over the inside of the bore, holding down my control key to pick the center of the bore. Then I'll pick on the center of the shaft. I'll then set it to cylindrical, which is already done. And I'll go to the dialog box under motion. You'll set joint limits here. Now this is just one place you can do this, but the first one I'm going to visit. The first one is the rotational component of the cylindrical joint. I'm going to freeze it by clicking on both box and set it to zero. I'm going to go to the slide. Now as I pick the first one, you'll notice this is a minimum. and You'll see a little blue icon show up. If I drag that over, you'll see the, notice I'm going in eighth inch increments because I have set up my incremental move and it's going negative, which will be minimum. I'll then click on the maximum side and I'll see a little gray bar, kind of an arrow, and drag it to my right. I'm going to go to the inch and an eighth. I'll then say OK and I've set my limits up, as you can see inch and a half to inch and an eighth. Now I mentioned incremental move. This is, comes from your navigation panel, incremental move. You can set up your increments depending on what you want. Set up, change it from adaptive to fixed and set the values you want. This can be used in other functions in Fusion as well as setting joint limits. It is also very dynamic. You can turn it on and off at will, even during commands with this checkbox. Returning to the dialog box for this joint, I'm going to edit it with the dialog box again and go to joint limits one more time. I'm going to remove the second checkbox and first just the first one. Now you'll notice that both checkboxes on the rotational ones check automatically. You have two arrows. This is your minimum, which I'll go around to 90. And this is your maximum. Go around to a 90 on the bottom. Or So I've set those. And I'll say OK. So now I have both rotational limits and linear limits. Let's remove that joint from the timeline and do it using a different method. I'll drag the piece off and replace the joint. I'll go to cylindrical. I'll hover again over the bore, hold my control key down and pick the center and the center. I'll say OK. This time we're going to go to the, the browser and expand the cylindrical joint. Notice there are two motions. You can lock one while you work on the other. I'm going to lock the rotation while I work on the limits of the slider using the little icon at the end. I'll use the same method. I'll pick on the first one and drag the little blue bar to the right one inch this time. Then click on the second and drag the little bar. Notice the numbers come up and my incremental drag allows me to do it an inch and an inch. Say OK. I'll now set up my one inch motion linear. Now we go back to the dialog box or the browser and we'll take the lock off the rotate and lock the slide while we're working on this. Now we'll hit join limits arrow on rotate and we can then click. Now remember in a rotate they both automatically start when you touch one. The little blue arrow is the minimum so I'll go around to this time I'll go to 180 and then I'm going to go actually 165 and I'll take this one around to 90. Notice the incremental move allows me to set it very quickly. Say OK. I now have my motions from 165 to 90. So that's another method to set it using the browser. When you finish setting them, you want to take the lock off both of them and you have your limits set. 
Let's show you another method of setting up joint limits using a rotational joint. I'm going to put this lever inside the, the clevis. So I'll go to joint. I'll pick on between two faces to find the center of this bar. Pick on this one, the far one, and the edge of the hole. Now I'll do the second one between two faces. Hover over this, hold down my left key and pick the inside face, the far face, and hover over the hole. They'll go together on center. I'll then change to revolve since I was on revolve this last time. I'll say OK. Now this time I'm going to actually just left click, excuse me, click on the joint in the display window and right click and set joint limits here. It brings up the same dialog box. This only has one motion. Remember on a revolve when you check the first one both of them come up automatically. The blue one is the one for negative. I'll go down negative to minus 70 and up to 90. And say OK. And you see the joints are set. Very quick and easy using the graphical input. Of course at any time you can modify them by going to the joint and then right click on either the actual motion with the edit limits or in this case the top level with edit motion limits. I'm going to change this one using my graphical input. I'm going to change it up to 110, 120 to 90. Actually, I'm going to go to 50. So it's very easy using your graphical input. So let's use the graphical method of setting up a pen and slot joint. This pen will go in this slot, which is 3 inches long. I'm going to go to pen and slot or joint, pick the center of the pen. I'm going to hover over the end bore and go to the center with a control key. I'll say OK. I'm going to expand in the browser. I'm going to lock down the rotate while I work on the slider. Go to edit motion limits. It is set up at the minimum right now so I'll leave it at zero. I'll go to the maximum. I'll pick this arrow, little arrow right there, and drag it out to two and a half. I'll then go back and I'm going to pick on the other arrow and notice that the two and a half seemed to disappear but it'll come back. I'm going to set the minimum to a half. I'll say OK. Going back to the browser, you'll see that I still have my joint there. So it goes from a half to two and a half. So we've set it up. Let's edit it. Let's go to Edit Joint Limits. And you'll see I'm going to change this one to three quarters. And I'm going to change the length of one to the full three. Say OK. And now we have our new joint limits at three quarter and three. You can see by the numbers. Let's do one last example by doing a planar joint between the back face of this piece and this face here. So we'll go to joint. I'll hold down my left click to pick the opposite face and pick the center. I'll pick the center here and I'll switch to planar. I'll say OK. Now planar joint has three motions. Two sliders and one rotate. I'm going to lock down the rotate while I work on one of the sliders. I'll lock down. Notice the colors. If you look closely the pink is going up and down and this slider is going left to right. So I'm going to lock down the pink one and work on the slider going side to side. Notice it highlights automatically in the dialog box which one I'm working on. I'll hit minimum and I'm going to drag the little bar to the short side which is minus one and a half. I'll click on the other one and then drag the little bar over to this side which is also inch and a half. Please don't let the zero bother you. It'll come back as soon as I click OK. Now as you can see I have an inch and a half that way by the numbers and I have an inch and a half this way. Now let's go back and 
change it to the other slider. So I'll unlock the pink and lock the little light blue. I'll then hit the edit joint limits on the pink one, which is up and down. Notice it highlights the correct one. And this is going up. That's not the one I want because that is I want the smaller value on top. Fusion requires that the joint limits be the smaller one on the top and will change if you do make a mistake. I'll now pick this bar and go up to three quarter as you can see the number. It's kind of hard to see but there it is. I'll say OK. I now have a motion going up and down by three quarters. If I go back and unlock the other one you'll have two motions. Unlock this one. I'll have both this and this, as you can see, within the bounds of my limits. Let's go back and go ahead and lock down both the linears and change, just change the rotational one with joint limits. Remember with rotational, when you click on this, both of them highlight automatically. The blue one is the one you want to start with. That is a negative one. I'm going to go up to 90. Notice my incremental move really helps me. And then I'm going to pick the bottom one to go down to minus 90. So it fills it in correctly. Remember the minus must be, or the smallest one must be on top. Say OK. I now have the motion for rotation. It's still locked here, so I'm going to unlock it. And I have my rotation of 90 degrees. I hope this is giving you insight into setting up your joint limits using the graphical interface rather than just guessing at numbers. Hope you get better use of Fusion 360 using this tip.